This video is sponsored by True Gold Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today, May 17, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we just had a very strong M-Class 7.25 solar flare. This came from a newly named sunspot that just came around the limb. And we're also now in a G2 geomagnetic storm, moderate geomagnetic storm. Jumping over to spaceweatherlive.com, we see that our chances of having that M flare were only 35%. The chances of us having an X flare down to 10%. Now we have all new sunspots in play. We have AR3679, that's fairly complex, and AR3671, that's also been active. Now the M7.25, as NASA and NOAA are calling it, has not been assigned to a sunspot yet, but I think we're going to be able to determine easily where that came from. Jumping over to HMI Intensigram, we can see that we have 13 sunspot groups that are currently Earth-facing. Several of them look like they're becoming more complex, with that said. 3679 and 3674 being two of those. Now, this actual solar flare either came from 3685 which i believe it did or 3686 that was just named y'all tell me what you think in the comments below now this is just a earlier view of our star earth facing and this is before 3686 here had been named this was taken early this morning so this is a freshly named sunspot or AR3685 actually created the M7.25 solar flare. You're going to have to tell me after seeing the explosion on GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager. And over to GOES 16 Solar Ultraviolet Imager, 195 angstroms. The explosion is right there. It's very hard to determine, but I believe it's at a 3685, not 3686. My opinion, please leave yours in the comments below. Uh, probably will not be effective towards Earth because of the position it's in currently. But we will see. Meanwhile, I know I mentioned that we were in a geomagnetic storm earlier, a G1. Well, we're now in a G2 geomagnetic storm, according to NOAA and NASA here. It's a KP6 and this is going to be six hours of geomagnetic storm from a G1 KP5 to a G2 KP6. Looking at the college index, we've been at a G2 geomagnetic storm for six hours, part of that in a disturbance. Taking a look at just the planetary KP index, estimated planetary KP index, three hour data we can see that we did hit G2 geomagnetic storm levels once again. And I pointed out that probably the X2.9 flare that happened about 48 hours ago is the culprit here. It was on the departing limb, and we know that our geomagnetic connection to the sun is on that limb. Now, heading over to NOAA's KP Index Breakdown Forecast for May 17th today, May 18th and 19th, 2024. You can see that they completely blew it. They had no idea that this geomagnetic storm was inbound. But remember, when we have an X2.9 on the departing limb, there's a very good chance that the Parker Spiral or geomagnetic connection will bring solar weather towards Earth period. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't have anything really happening until the 19th here. And at that point, they just have a geomagnetic disturbance. But they really blew it today. We did KP5, then KP6, and this is all their forecasts here. I wanted to show you all what I think the culprit 
of this is, this G2 geomagnetic storm here, it's going to be the second X flare we had here on the 15th. The first one was an X3.4, but it was from the, well, sunspot group coming around the limb, whereas this X2.4, I believe, 2.9, that's right, 2.9, well, that was from the departing limb where we have our geomagnetic connection to, I believe y'all know, AR36. Six five, right? I will say I've pulled up uh, Discover Real Time Solar Winds and ACE and other sources, and it's real hard to find a chrome mass ejection impact here. I do see that the shields popped up here, and we're in an event currently. But this event is made of solar winds, and there's really no plasma increase over about five or six centimeters cubed. Now we see the temperature jump up a little bit. It's continuing to jump up. And winds have gone up to right around 500 kilometers per second. Nothing here screams G2 geomagnetic storm whatsoever. And we all know that these, well, solar winds are created by coral holes. And 500 kilometers per second and 475, 460 is not very strong at all. Plasma is created from a solar flare or a filament eruption. We don't see any plasma striking Earth. It's even over 10 centimeters cubed, mostly under six. So where is the G2 geomagnetic storm? What created it? Well, this is a very light impact, if it's an impact at all. And again, it's solar winds, which should be created from a coronal hole not a solar flare or filament eruption. But again, I would guess that that X 2.9 solar flare is the cause of this. Based on the fact that we've had no coronal holes earth facing in some time. Check, check, and double check. We can see right here about 1228. We fly up from 396 to 489. Almost a 100 kilometers per second quicker and we've kept well going in between about 470 or 450 and 500 i don't know why went from a g1 to a g2 when winds are really falling off and we never saw any plasma come through a very strange to say the least chrome mass ejection impact i'm going to show you all the chart where NOAA actually points out the impact. Here is NOAA pointing out the coronal mass ejection impact here. You can see the plasma goes nowhere. Temperatures rise, solar winds rise, and they have the line here. I wanted y'all to know that they're calling it a coronal mass ejection impact and not a solar wind event. It's extremely strange. Now, looking at ACE real-time space weather, our other older satellite things get even stranger our temperatures continue up and so does wind speed now over 500 kilometers per second and plasma is now under one centimeter cubed how could this be a chrome mass ejection i just don't get it especially a g2 moderate chrome mass ejection impact on earth's magnetic shield over to STO HMI magnetogram, we see these two new sunspots here. It's going to be real hard to keep them apart. They might morph into one. Looks like some of it's reverse polarity with white over black in the southern hemisphere. Should always be black over white. With the most complex sunspots being in the southern hemisphere. I don't really see any complexity in the northern hemisphere whatsoever. I will say NASA is at least updating their SOHO images. This is 284 angstroms. It was taken at 7.06 this morning. And this shows you these coming around the limb. You can see additional sunspots coming around the limb in the northern hemisphere. And you can see that these sunspots are, well, somewhat more active than we gave them credit for. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we were still in a polar cap absorption event just hours ago. I'm going to run through this. We'll probably be pushed back into one based on this flare. 
because it definitely hit our ghost satellite as we saw and it definitely also hit earth so i think that we're going to jump right back into a polar cap absorption event and maybe even a proton event based on an m 7.25 flare this is that flare mostly over the united states and canada all the way to alaska covering most all of the pacific including hawaii and central america and it fades off not a real long-term event but a pretty strong m flare for sure with that said folks a big waste of money look at their may 17th forecast for the actual geomagnetic storms and solar winds they said nothing was going to happen but we're at g2 levels and it really looks like nothing did happen god bless you and yours any explanations or ideas would be greatly appreciated in the comments below please share subscribe and always remember that anything's possible in bizarro world god bless